Hello everyone, welcome to the second lesson still on aggregate and today we'll be looking at cause aggregate which is commonly known as stones. But before we move on to stones, just a quick recap of what we learned last week. Last week it was introduction. We made mention of aggregate and this is where we said aggregate is a term used to describe sand and stone when it comes to building and constructional purposes. The two types of aggregate include fine aggregate, which is commonly known as sand, coarse aggregate, which is commonly known as stones. Then the qualities of fine aggregate. It should be well graded in size, free from impurities, and at the same time, it should not stain the hand. The functions of sand in mortar and concrete work include, one, reducing the shrinking effect of mortar and concrete and at the same time increasing the volume of your mixture. Then finally, we talked about the type of sand and where each can be derived. This is where we encountered pit sand, sea sand, and at the same time river sand. So pit sand, as we said, is obtained from sandy area. River sand is obtained from river banks. Then the final one is a sea sand, which is obtained from the sea shore. We now come to today's business, which is coarse aggregate. When we talk of coarse aggregate, coarse aggregates are aggregate which are retained on a standard 5 millimeter sieve. This means that when it comes to comparing coarse aggregate to fine aggregate, fine aggregate can pass through a standard 5 millimeter sieve. But when you are separating these two, the ones which you retain on the surface of the sieve, they are known as coarse aggregate. And the ones which will pass through your 5mm sieve, they are known as fine aggregate. So mostly all coarse aggregate, they retain on the standard 5 millimeter sieve. So examples of coarse aggregate include stones, gravels, bricks, and finally, finance. All these are typical examples of coarse aggregates. We now move on to the qualities of stones. So before I purchase my stone for any constructional work, I need to have certain questions in mind. And this is what we know as the factors one need to consider when selecting stones for any constructional work. So some of these factors include one, it should be free from dirt or impurities. So examples of these dirt or impurities may include salt, your stamps, your broken bottles, your dead root, etc. The second one, stone should be well graded in size. And don't forget the sizes of stones ranges from 5 mm and above. So if in case I'm going for 10 mm stones, all should be of the same size. Then the third one says what? It needs to be hard. So my stones should not dissolve in water, especially when making any concrete work. Let's now come to the uses of stones. One, stone is used for foundation slab. And this is a typical example of a foundation slab. This is one use of stones. Two, it is used for making columns and at the same time, pillars. The third one, it is used for making beams and at the same time, lentil. So what we see on my left side is known as beam. The image we see on my right side is known as lentil. The fourth one, it is used for making covert. And this is a typical example of a culvert, which, is, which has been used. So culvert, they are mostly used when constructing of bridges, when constructing of dams, when constructing of well. So when it comes to all these constructional work, you can buy your culvert, which will make it very easy and simple for you. The fifth one, it is used for making concrete wall. So this is a typical example of a concrete wall and concrete walls are mostly needed when constructing of dams or bridges or gutters. So when it comes to this constructional work, because of the pressure of the water, you need not to use ordinary wall. So the wall needs to be concrete wall, which will be very strong and durable to resist the pressure from water. 
We now move on to the various type of stones. The two common type of stones that we have in the system, one, we have what you call the sandstone. So sandstone is mostly obtained from granular earth. And when you talk of granular earth, it's under the soil. So sometimes when digging the ground, in the course of digging, you will encounter one or two stones under the earth. When all these stones are collected and guarded, you can break it into pieces, which is suitable for building and construction work. So the footage we see below is a typical example of sandstone. The second type is known as granite. Granite is mostly obtained from rock. So when rock is being blasted or when it explodes by inserting a dynamite in it, the stones which is being which comes out of it, these stones can be collected. You further break it into different sizes. And after breaking it into these sizes, they are now suitable for any construction work. So let's now move on to last week's assignment. The reason why I repeated this assignment is that some of you did the work, some didn't do the work. That is why I have repeated the question again. So please, if you are listening to me and you didn't submit your work, it's because of you that I've repeated the question again. Get rid of the question, answer all, and forward your answers to me as early as possible. Let's now come to today's assignment. So today's assignment, question one says what? You are to explain the term cost aggregate. Question two, you mentioned three factors to consider when selecting stones. Question number three, you state two type of stones and their sources each. Then question four, you outline four uses of stones. But please and please and please, don't forget to attach your student ID to all your assignments and presentation. Very necessary. So your name, your student ID, and finally the date that you are submitting the work or doing the work. All these are important details which should reflect on all your assignments. All right, so next to God willing, still under aggregate, what aspect will we be looking at? Next week, we will now move on to types of concrete. And as I've given you a gist of what we'll be learning next week, please do your further research. If you have any question, don't forget to send me your questions on my mail through my WhatsApp number, and I'll be quick to respond to all these questions even before the D-Day. So when all is said and done, don't forget to forward your answers, your questions, your observation via email sagacious 59 at gmail.com via WhatsApp 0240-900-650. This is where we wrap up for today. Next week, God willing, we will meet and continue on with this topic. Have a blessed day and take good care of yourself. Bye for now.